this is Abhay. Welcome to my channel. In this video, I'll be discussing about the complete security of your Anaton instance installed via Docker containers. In the past few weeks, I have made few videos on how to self-host Anaton, what is the best way to backup and restore the Anaton instance, as well as few other videos for connections related setup. And this is the last video in this series where I'll be uh, guiding you through the Anaton self-hosting. And this is regarding the security of your Anaton instance. So the first point in this particular thing is set up the port forwarding for access via domain. So in the few videos back, I have made a video on Portainer and as well as Nginx Proxy Manager in which I have installed Nginx Proxy Manager as well as Portainer on your servers. And I also guided you how you can set up a reverse proxy for your Anaton. So you can uh, use the Anaton from your domain like anaton.yourdomain.com. And in that video, I have explained you about how to set up the port forwarding and other setups related to the SSL. So what this point mentions that uh, forward ports not just for Anaton instance but also like tools like Portainer and Nginx Proxy Manager from which specific port we access. So port 9000 and 9443 are for Portainer and port 81 is for Nginx Proxy Manager. So instead of accessing that those particular web applications via the IP addresses and ports use it via domain name and set up the port forwarding for there. Or if you are using any other application on your instance make sure that you are using port forwarding there. If you want to know more about how to set up the port forwarding and how you can do it using Nginx Proxy Manager, uh, I have mentioned in a previous video of Anaton self-hosting. I link that video in the description of this video. Next point is lock down the unnecessary ports that is only allow 22, 80 and 43 port. So the 22 port is for SSH by which we are connecting to the server and 80 and 443 ports are HTTP and HTTPS ports. So by 80 you serve HTTP traffic and by 443 you serve HTTPS traffic. Once you set up the port forwarding via Nginx Proxy Manager or via any other method, then please make sure that you block all other ports on your server. Just only enable port 22 as well as port 80 and port 443. You can do that via going to your server's default security list and under default security list, how we have added the servers, for example, Oracle Cloud interface. So I have uh, created the videos in the past two on this Oracle Cloud interface and self-hosting using Oracle Cloud interface. And you can come here and you can come under security list, default security list for a URA subnet. And then you can delete the ports from there. The third point is setting up a firewall named as UFW. That is uncomplicated firewall that is set up for Linux and Ubuntu. And if your cloud provider like Oracle Cloud or GCP doesn't allow uh, opening or closing the ports of your server and few ports are open for your servers for example 5678 for Anaton or any other ports that you may have opened up then you can remove it using UFW. You can use this particular commands to install UFW, deny the incoming allowed ports and how to enable the UFW. I'll guide you in a moment how to set up UFW and how you can block ports using UFW. To set up UFW you will have to log into your server via root. Once you are logged into the server, you will have to run this particular command sudo apt install ufw. Once this is installed, you will have to write this command sudo ufw deny incoming. Default security list changed. The next part is sudo ufw allow ssh. You will have to allow the ssh port. If ufw allow http, this is the http port. And sudo ufw allow https. And the last command is sudo ufw enable. And once this is done, you can see that firewall is active and enabled on your system startup. You'll just have to reboot your server. And that's it. You have installed ufw on your server and only configured to allow port 22, 80 and 443. Make sure before enabling ufw, as I mentioned earlier, you set up port forwarding using Nginx proxy manager or any proxy manager you're using and you do a proper port forwarding because we'll be blocking all other ports other than 22, 80 and 443 by using these commands. So make sure you have done the port forwarding. The third point is uh, using Cloudflare for your DNS and proxy. Let me explain what Cloudflare is. So Cloudflare is nothing but a service that offers CDN, DNS and many other services. But most probably the world uses Cloudflare for proxying. So what proxy is essentially this is your web server and this is the client that they are accessing your web server. So once you enable the Cloudflare, it sits in between your web server and your client. And once we have the Cloudflare in between, Cloudflare offers a protection like bot protection, DDoS protection, and you can configure many other tools on the Cloudflare level. If anyone wants to access your server uh, by a particular URL that is blocked by Cloudflare, so the first traffic will come to Cloudflare. If you have set up any rules within Cloudflare to block it, then it will block the traffic and it will not go to your origin server. 
and because of which the Cloudflare is actually very good. So you can configure the Cloudflare and then configure the proxy status in this. So this will have the IP address of your server and you will have a record or CNAME record, the DNS records here and you can enable the proxy so that Cloudflare will proxy the each and every traffic. If you want a detailed video on how to set up the Cloudflare uh, for your self-hosting, please let me know. I'll be happy to make one. So the next point in our list is set up Cloudflare security rules. You can use Cloudflare to set up a web application firewall rule on the DNS level. It, you can set up to block access to sensitive paths for anytime login instance as well as allow access to your anytime instance from particular your country or your IP range or any specific IP if you are using it. If you want a dedicated tutorial on this too, please let me know. I'll be happy to create for this one too. The next two options are very optional. Like uh, you can set up the tail scale and Cloudflare tunnel if you want to disable the port 22 and disable port 80 and 443 completely. So we have enabled in the first few steps the port 22 and port 80 and 443. The 22 is for SSH connections uh, via terminals and port 80 and 443 are normal HTTP and HTTPS connections. If you want to disable that completely too, and then still have to access the servers and do that. So their Telscale is a tool uh, meant specifically for disabling the port 22 and using via secure tunnel network. And similarly, Cloudflare tunnel is available to expose your server to the end public. Without setting up reverse proxies or Nginx proxy manager setting up proxies there, you can use Cloudflare tunnel to set up a direct access for your server uh, from a public domain. So if you want videos on these two topics also, I'll uh, make one, please request me. Uh, you can search these topics on ChatGPT or any IM model and it, it can guide you for the entire setup too. But these things are very advanced and it requires much more time to set up. So uh, let me know as per your preference, I'll be happy to make one too. The next three points here are for additional securities for internal workflows creation within Anaten. So the seventh point is never store your credentials within Anaten unencrypted. What it means that the Anaten has a particular section within your account for creating credentials. What it means that when you're connecting to any external service like Google Sheets, Google Drive, Google Slides, or OpenAI or any other external service, you can create credentials from here. You can search here and you can add any particular credentials here. Please use this particular method only to create credentials. I've seen multiple other methods on YouTube that uh, there are some ways to storing credentials as variables within Anaten or storing it anywhere else. But please don't do that. If any integration is not available within Anaten as a node, then you will be using HTTP request module. In this particular module too, whenever you are making an API call, please make sure here choose the authorization method. Please do not pass this directly as query parameters or directly via header headers. So make sure that either you do authentication via here by using the API doc you are using, but please do not paste it directly in your query parameters. The next point is regarding upgrading your Anaten instance regularly. If you have installed Anaten using Docker and Portainer, it's very easy to upgrade. You can come to Portainer or any other UI by which you are managing your Docker containers. Then come to Stacks from where you have installed the Anaten. And then come to Editor. Once you come to Editor, you have to click on Update the Stack. And make sure you choose this particular option that is Repool Image and Redeploy. That means what it does that it will automatically pull up the latest image if you have used the word latest here in this particular section, image, init and latest. So make sure you used latest word here and then click on repool image and redeploy and click on update button. So what it does that it will automatically find out the latest version of init and it will upgrade the init and you can see that the stacks has been successfully upgraded. And this is how you can upgrade to the latest version if you are using a Docker as well as port in it to manage init. And the last point here is use a dedicated Docker network. Isolate the Anaten from other containers using it. For example, while uh, setting up the Portainer via Nginx Proxy Manager, I explained this point in detail too. Uh, why to create a dedicated network and how you can create a dedicated network and map it to the Anaten instance. I'll link down that video in the video's description too, so you can do that. And that's it for this video. I've tried to cover most of the points for Anaten instance security uh, for self-installation using Docker and container. And if you want to access this particular document, you can find the link in the description to access this document. And also, if you want a dedicated video on any of the topic, just like Telscale or Cloudflare Tunnel I have mentioned here, do let me know. Based on the comments, preferences, I'll happy to make a video on that too. If you have any questions related to the security setup of your Anaten Docker container, do let me know in the comment section. If you need any assistance in this particular, either you can reach me via social media or via email or you can ask me in the comments. 
थैंक यू फॉर वॉचिंग दिस वीडियो हैव अ ग्रेट डे बाय